Rolling. Welcome back to Goonies World. I am Johnny Farrow, also known as Sean, and with me, as always, is Ryan, also known as Meanie. And also known as Gagalk. That is right. And, of course, I also have here, staring at me from the screen, Goonie, also known as Colin, also known as Doof. Mm -hmm. Me, Doof, me, Goonie, me, Colin. All right. Yes, and as you might have guessed, we're going back to the Ice Age in the fabulously distant past where our heroes Gagalk and Doof have been tasked. Uh, they've been sent on a quest to find Sky Metal, which had fallen from the sky on a falling star. They were sent by the grandfather of their clan. And uh, much, much to the dismay of the jealous Nolar, a powerful hunter of the clan who expected that he should be sent on such an important quest. But you're many days away from your clan now, the clan of the Owl. You've been traveling through the forests and down out of the mountainous lands. And uh, you had made camp and trapped some rabbits. And uh, just as you were drifting off to sleep, there's a terrible whooping and hollering in the forest around you. And some hairy men came loping out on the fringes of the firelight. One of them even charged as fast, as far as he could towards your fire. And the hairy men really get to you. Your people hate them and you kill them whenever you find them and they kill you. There's some uncanny valley stuff going on between you two that is not pleasant at all. But they are not nearly as smart as you. They have clubs and rocks and things like that, and they're very hairy and shorter than you. Uh, you have bowed legs, but their legs are really bowed. And uh, they're whooping and hollering and have charged forward. This one especially, this bold little one, he didn't have any weapons or anything, and he just rushed in screaming at the top of his lungs to try to get some of your fire. And otherwise, uh, of all of you guys, Gagalk is by far the fastest one and may react. This little fella has run up about six yards from you uh, so far, Gagalk, which is about as far as you can move in a, uh, in a turn. These are one second turns, so you can get a lot less done than we're used to in a turn. Well, let us see. I actually need to... For some reason, I didn't write down the, the die values of the like brawling damage and stuff, so I'm looking that up. Well, it will be your strength. It's, I'll tell you what it is. What is your strength? It is 12. 12. Then that's going to be 1d minus 1 thrusting, or 1d plus 2 swinging. Very well. Uh, well... I am going to... So how many of them are there? Just two? Well, you think there's three. There's one. There's a, there's a couple on the edge of your vision on the firelight, about 18 yards away. But there's one that's rushed in closer who's about six yards away. He's he's by himself, and he's by far closer. All right. Well, uh, the little, little bold one, I'm going to uh, just punch him. Okay. You might want to wait for him to keep moving then. If you you can move towards him, but then that's all you'll really be able to do. Is, uh, oh, so he's not near enough to actually. No, he's six yards away. You can move towards him, but that's all you can do in GURPS is right. one thing. Well, I... Hmm. I don't think I have. Yeah. Uh, I think I will just wait then. Okay. You wait for him to come charging in. And uh, meanwhile, there's a fellow in the back that you see him... Uh, not the guy right up close, but the ones at the edge of the firelight. One of them's a big one, and he hefts up this gigantic club that he's carrying, made out of wood. Looks like he's going to come. He's readying himself to run in. And uh, you guys probably both notice another guy back on the firelight, one of the little hairy people. He raises his arm back with a big stone as if he's going to hurl it. But, of course, he's aiming, so he can't throw it right now. And then uh, the this little close one... He comes, he's already gone. His, his action started this whole thing off. He's actually the fastest one. That's why they sent him. Uh, and then Doof, what do you do? 
Uh, I think I will... Um, I will throw a rock if I can. Yes, you can, and unless you aim, you'll throw it at a minus four. But I don't know if Doof cares about such things. You know, he probably won't aim. He's going to throw it at the guy that's rushing okay, in. So whatever your skill in that is, subtract four, and then that's what you need, or less, on three dice to hit him. No, it goes wide. It goes wide. The rock flies off. Well, hey, you know what? Everybody doesn't have time to stop and aim. And then this fellow comes rushing in with his move at the beginning, at the top of the round. And he's very, he's right next to you. That's about as far as he's going to get, uh, Gag Alex. So you're well positioned now to punch him in the face if that's what you want to do. Indeed, I will, uh, make a brawling roll. All right. And that's going to be 12, which is under my skill of 16. That is definitely good enough to hit him, but let's see if he can't, uh, fling himself out of the way. And my little fella here has a dodge skill of 6 altogether. Well, let's count in his... No, he doesn't have any passive defense because he's naked. And... He has a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, that's not going to do it, I'm afraid. And your punch connects, doing the swinging damage, I assume. Big old huge haymaker-type punch. So that'll be 1d plus 2. Uh, Crushing damage. And I add another 1 tenth of my brawling skill, so another 1 on top of that. Four. I rolled a 1, so uh, 4. Okay. Well, still, 4 is good. Now it's not half of his uh it's not half of his health, but it's still good. Uh, yeah, you know, if you take half of your health, like in one blow, you're gonna get knocked down. And so uh he doesn't knock down, but bam, it's a big it's a big punch. He doesn't have any DR to speak of, so he's not soaking any of that. And in that next second though, uh the, the one with the club in the back screams and starts running in, but he's not going to get here yet. He's just on his way in. Probably take him maybe two or three turns to get here. And then the little one that you saw aiming the rock last time, he hurls the rock at Doof. And let's see if he's good enough to hit. And uh, Doof, he's going to hit you, but you can dodge a thrown rock. Do you want to try to dodge that? Yeah. Now, whatever your parry, I mean, whatever your dodge is, add one, because your passive defense helps in this. All right. Uh, no, I missed. I mean, I didn't. Well, it's too bad. Dodge. But so the rock. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess with minus, that's gonna be four points of damage to you. You have a dr two, I think. So you can soak mm -hmm. two of that. Your next attack, of course, will be at a minus two. And it, 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 in fact, is your turn. Now, the only one that's close enough to actually bash is the one that Ryan has just punched. But, yeah. But you could do any number of other things, like throw another rock at one of these guys on a fire. I think uh, why this guy, this little hairy guy that just got uh, sat down by a punch... Uh, while he's down there, I'm going <clears> to <throat> try to spear him. Well, I'll clarify, he didn't get knocked down. I was just saying that he could have. But uh, oh, you could still okay. spear his ass, though. This would be a nice impaling attack if you thrust it. Okay, and that will hit... Well, let's see if he can dodge. You know what? He's the worst dodger for a fast little dude that I've ever seen. And go ahead and roll your damage. And that will be <clears throat> seven. He will, of course, soak none of that, and it's an impaling weapon, so the damage is doubled, and he, it goes right through him. 
and uh, he looks a little shocked, a little surprised, just for a second. In his dim little eyes, you can see some final recognition of death. Uh, but please make a strength roll to uh, yank your spear back out of him. Yes, I do. And uh, that guy's not going to go, so he has no turn at the top of the round. But Gagalt does. Now, there's about two turns away, movement-wise, the big guy with the club. And then the little guy who just threw the rock is about three turns of movement away. That's, it's easier to speak of it in terms of turns than yards. Hmm. <clears throat> well, uh, I, I don't... I think Gagalk would probably bolt at the rock-throwing guy. Yeah, I think that's a great, great idea. And now uh, you rush off there, and you move through this turn, and uh, the <clears throat> big guy with the club, he's moving towards you as if to kind of move in and intercept. And since he was already kind of moving in that direction anyway, he just comes in at a diagonal. But he himself is still around away from reaching you. And uh, then the little guy with the rock panics and throws without aiming. Uh, and he should have aimed because his rock, too, goes wild into the night beyond the edge of the firelight. And uh, doof at the bottom of the round. What do you do? Mm, this time I'm gonna. Tr- I am going to aim at the uh, the other rock thrower. Okay, okay. So you spent around through my spent around aiming. Okay, and then top of the next round with Gagalk, you could uh, veer off and get the big guy with the club, or you could keep running and uh, hit the uh, the little guy with the rock. Uh, yeah. Gagalk thinks that uh, Doof is probably better suited for the big guy with the club. So I think he's, he's probably right. To- yeah, I'll keep uh, pursuing the rock throwing person. Okay, Very okay. Person. Now, the big guy, he's not moving as fast as you because he's encumbered. So you're able to. to he, he, he may realize he's not going to intercept you before your trajectory towards the rock thrower finishes. Um, and it is, in fact, his turn. And he does that. He, he stops his uh, veering off towards you and heads back towards the firelight. About another six yards. Now he's only about one round, one turn away from you now, uh, Doof. But the little guy with the rock again uh, does a panic rock throw without aiming at Gagalk as Gagalk's coming in, and that's going to be an eight. That's pretty good, uh, Gagalk. I bet you could dodge that though. Well, you can certainly try. Don't forget to add in your PD. Which is one. So I need a seven and oh, but uh, I rolled an eleven, unfortunately. Oh no! Well, the rock comes in, and fortunately for you, after my that's that's. I think your dr is going to soak that. That's just a two. That will indeed be so. No damage gets through. It just hits you in just the right spot that it stings, you know. But uh, it's like getting hit with a paintball, <laughs> and uh, and so that means it is. Doof's turn, and you've already got a rock. You've already been aiming. You know this guy's going to get to you soon, the guy with the club, but he's not there yet. You still have time to hurl your rock. All right. Well, I was trying to throw it, uh, aim at the, uh, at, I know, yeah, the rock I know. thrower. So, okay. Uh... And I'm okay. Uh, yeah, I got great, it. Great, great. I'm not going to really let him dodge right now because he's more concerned about possibly parrying an incoming blow from uh, Gagout, who's almost towards him. He's a little bit too distracted by Gagout to be Gagout to be paying too much attention to your rock. So please go ahead and uh, roll okay. your a rock. I think it's 2D one. minus 1 for you. And you got about 30 yard range with that, so you're well within range. And that is a seven as well. Okay, that is more than half his health. And uh, he's he falls on his ass when you hit him with the rock. And uh, just cracks him, bam, he, he falls backwards. Setting up Gagalk rather nicely uh, for an attack in the next round. 
Unfortunately, and it is in fact now Gagalk's turn. Oh my. Ah, uh, that is going to be a critical success. That is great. That was going to be 10 points of damage. That obviously. I mean, five double 10. You were punching him, right? <laughs> I mean, you punched him to death. I mean, you hit him right in the temple, I guess. You know what I mean? It was just cracked. He'd already been hit with a rock, so he just got a one two. Now, now the only one that's left is the big, big guy with the club, who whose turn it is. And he, of course, is ready to attack Doof with his club. But when he gets up there, he can't just immediately hit you because the club is so big that he has to ready it for a turn. He has to pick it up behind him and like, like get ready to swing it down at you. And so uh, it's... Well, that uh, sounds like it's going to freaking hurt when it, it does it, it. It, Well, it might. And um, so we, what do you do in this one, literally one second of opportunity before the club comes down? Uh, can I like dodge now or no? <laughs> no, you can attack him. You can stab him before he. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I will. Uh, he's wide open. He's wide so open. I will spear him. Oh, and that easily. Oh, hits. there you go. Uh, he's not in any position to dodge without spoiling his thing and he's not the brightest guy so go ahead and take roll your damage he'd rather take his I keep rolling sevens okay that's great that is uh not you no know, that is more than half his health and uh he he also stumbles down to his knees with the blow and uh, he's, he's ruined his uh his uh, you know, benefit of readying his weapon, of course, now he's on his ass. Meanwhile, about 18 yards away, what is Gagalk doing? Uh, Gagalk has, Gagalk has a spear, right? I remember, I remember. Yeah, correctly. yeah, he does, he does. And even though, even if he doesn't have the skill, he can still use it. Yeah, well, he doesn't, but he's gonna attempt to chuck it at, uh, at this guy on the ground. Okay, well, we're just gonna take a look at spear throwing. And spear throwing will default to dex minus four, which I believe is a ten. And I rolled uh, a twelve, <laughs> so not not quite. I was really hoping you would do that. Uh, but <laughs> next to the guy in the ground, though, there there comes your spear shaft, and uh, probably surprises Doof as well. Um, that guy is going to go from prone to kneeling on his next turn. He's going from prone to kneeling. And uh, Doof, it is your turn. He's now kneeling on in front of you, trying to get up. You're going to let him get up. No, if I can help it, I'm going to take another stab at him with my spear. Well, that still hits. And I don't think there's any reason why he can't dodge while he's kneeling. Uh, he tries to roll out of the way, but that's 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 way more than a six. So no, he's not dodging. Okay. Um, and that time I rolled a five damage. Okay. And uh, I forgot about this earlier. That big guy has the same advantage you do of uh, natural toughness. So he's going to soak one of that. But I think we also forgot last time that that will be doubled oh. the damage that does get through because it's impaling. So it's going to be, what, six points of damage altogether. And uh, um, yeah, he also has taken enough damage on his last turn that that's got him down below zero. He's, he's, uh, in fact, he's not even necessarily dead in this system at zero. He's got to see if he stays conscious, and he doesn't. And so all three of these guys are lying, dying before you. Do you want to go around giving him the quick uh, coup de Gracie? Uh, I I think we should. Uh, Culturally speaking, you you would find absolutely nothing wrong with it. Yeah, and practically speaking, because uh, if we don't kill them, uh, they could. Uh, bring back if they survive you know they could go and get help or Perfect. whatever so make sure. yeah 
make sure they're dead. And I'm going to pick up a large rock and just smash their skulls. Sounds and... very appropriate. But they were desperate for fire. Doof. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, these bodies may attract predators or scavengers. So we, we must eat them first. I don't think we could possibly consume all of them. Yeah, in me fact, can. point of me uh, little interesting cultural point. One of the reasons you hate these guys so much is your people have a pretty strong taboo against cannibalism, but these guys don't. Well, me, me is an outcast. Me like delicate taboo. <laughs> Uh, the two, in fact, the two real taboos your tribe has, your your clan of the Al has, are taboos against incest and cannibalism. And that, that's what makes you the real people, and everybody else some other kind of people, apparently in your minds. But I agree, though, that it's, they will attract predators. These corpses, you should maybe come up with an idea or a plan, or move your camp. <laughs> yes, I think we should. Now they interrupt. They like woke us up, right? Yeah, you were drifting off. You hadn't quite fallen asleep, I don't think. Our, our fire is that still going? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They were. And they failed to steal our yep. fire. Their own little quest for fire failed. Hmm. Well, I think we will have to move camp or carry these corpses. A distance away if it, to make it safe to sleep here or I mean it, it can't be safer to try to travel I don't know I don't, I, I'm not sure doof I I require your wisdom <laughs> <laughs> mm, me think mm, me have to take shit. <laughs> me do. <deuce. laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> Actually, that is a really good idea. You should take a shit on all the corpses, and then perhaps predators will be deterred. <laughs> I think that's a great me, idea. Me mask scent with feces. No, I don't think you need to worry about uh, moving camp in terms of being too dangerous. You don't need to travel that far away. You know, maybe a mile might do. And you've traveled enough at night that it's not utterly terrifying. So that's not like an impossible option. It probably is a safer option than staying here. You, you know a little bit about survival, the natural world. You figure if you just a short jog away, rebuild the fire, it would probably be a sensible enough precaution. The one thing that you've got that you don't really want to do is if you recall you guys were at the borderlands between the forest and some grasslands you'd seen some gazelles there yesterday you didn't try to hunt them or anything the one thing you would have an aversion to is camping out on the grasslands if you could help it and how close yeah. are we to them well you're, you're you're not that far at all you can actually see them you know through the trees right. maybe half a mile away but but uh you could move you know to the east or west and not enter them only if you went to the south yeah let's uh I'm gonna gather up um some materials to with which to sort of craft like a uh not exactly a torch but something to carry the fire with me um yeah less a million times yeah and that's something you guys uh that's something you guys can easily do it's something you guys do all the time in fact, and uh, yeah, once I've got th the fire uh, carried, carried, uh, I'll put out obviously the one that we had yeah. going, and then say, "Okay, doof, let us travel to the west." Yeah. S speaking of fire, you you you've made you've uh, made one of these yourself, but you know Nolar, the mighty hunter, who you left back in your. Uh, your clan's home. He he has a, a horn, you know, a great big bit of uh, auroch horn that's sort of hollowed out and old. That's what he carries fire around in. That's a nice thing to have. Maybe maybe someday you guys can have a nice fire carrier like like that. But 
you guys move off and set up another camp at a suitable distance away, and I'm happy to say the rest of the night passes without incident. In the morning, however, you're faced with uh, going out onto the plain. You know the falling star went to the south, and uh, you're going to have to go out across it. You don't know how many days it will take to cross it, so you, you would feel naturally on your guard before such an endeavor. The uh, gazelle herd that was there yesterday, they're not in the area now, but that doesn't mean that a bunch of uh, herd animals couldn't come in more or less at any time. There's some rising dust on the southwest horizon that seems to indicate a large herd of something. If you were hunting, you'd be really happy about, but you're not. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time just looking for, you know, like a uh, creek or, or you know, some source of, of fresh water. Why don't you go ahead and make a sense roll, which would be equal to your IQ, unless you've got any kind of acute senses that would augment that. I don't, although I do have survival skill, which might be relevant. I think we'll go with sense. It might be relevant. We'll see what your senses tell you first. My senses tell me something because I rolled a five. And it's actually really just a, a matter of walking and around and listening because you do hear a little bubbling brook. It's running out onto the plain. It seems there's actually a bit of a hidden gully running through the plain. Because of all the tall grass, it's not really evident from this far away, but there's enough of a slope on that plain that it's carrying a, a little... Uh, brook down into it from the the highlands to your back and it could uh you don't know how deep it gets out on the plane because uh, you know line of sight issues and distance but definitely find some fresh water and what direction is this brook running it's running vaguely to the southwest but definitely south and and what direction we know we need to go south but is it well, that's that can be kind of that can be kind of hard to, to to tell, you know. The fireballs streaked through the sky to the south. You, you okay. Well, I'm gonna go, go go ahead and fill up my uh, bladder and take it back to the camp, and you know. It'd be funny if uh, Doof was emptying his bladder upstream while you were filling your bladder <laughs> downstream. Just gonna say, I was just gonna say, I'm emptying my. Okay. Bladder. Well, I'll assume that you do that on the right, you know upstream downstream area and it's good yeah you definitely want to replenish your supplies i remember yesterday i believe you guys gathered up a bunch of food if i'm not mistaken you had get you had dried enough of the rabbit meat to take with well i don't get dry that fast but you've got enough of the rabbit meat to take with you well you know you, you smoke it long enough i mean it's it's pretty well cured yeah know? i just i don't know if you could do that one night but it doesn't matter you're going to eat it before it would matter um Indeed, I was going to uh, use some of this water to, uh, you know, make a little stew, breakfast rabbit stew. Baby, we got a stew going. That's right. And I think you guys gathered some fruits too yesterday. Uh, on the yep, so like fruit and rabbit stew. Yeah, fruit and rabbit stew. Get well fortified. And then I guess it's you know probably been an hour or two by now, and uh, you have to head out onto that uh, plain. Do you want to follow the course of the brook, or do you want to? head off due south across the plain. I would like to follow the course of the brook, uh, reasoning that being near a known source of potable water is, you know, heading into unknown territory is is going to be good. And also wary of the fact that, you know, other people might have, or, you know, might have settlements near such a, you know, uh, resource. Yeah, I think that's a very good plan. And of course, everything you can see to the south, as far as your eye can see, is just open, waving grasslands. But uh, this brook actually does carve a, I wouldn't call it a deep gorge, but uh, it, it's a good six or eight foot deep uh, creek that runs in a very winding, meandering path because it's just a very subtle slope in the ground. Uh, but you know, this, this prairie is not 100% completely flat, but there's many tall grasses, all kinds of wild grain. You could walk around just snapping, snapping off heads of grain and chewing on them. It's a perfectly good snack and keeps you well fortified. But, uh, do you want to walk up on the level of where the grass is or do you want to 
pad along, you know, the little muddy banks of the uh, the creek, sheltered no. sheltered down below. I think I think it would be better to stay up in the grass, lands. I think we need to have some height so we can see, try to see something's coming. Because you could always jump down into the creek. Right. Yes. I think that is also a great plan. And as you move throughout the day, uh, that uh, tall column of uh, of dust in the southwest, it uh, gets closer and closer, and eventually you guys can hear it in the earth. There's a great big herd coming. A big old herd of something. And uh, you guys are... Uh, when it gets close enough, you know, even within about a mile or two, you realize this is a woolly rhinoceros herd that's moving. These are great big rhinoceroses. They're uh, Nolar's after actually named after them. That's like his totem animal is a great big woolly rhinoceros. So much like Nolar, they're all jerks and uh, much more aggressive than their modern counterparts, especially the big bulls. And, uh, I will let you be the judge of what to do. Then they're they could veer off a little bit to the south, but you got the idea they're coming right for you. And that many of them could accidentally injure themselves in the uh, in the gorge. Not the kind of thing they're going to be able to easily climb down into and drink water. It's probably not why they're coming here. Yeah, I think we should uh, try to uh, get to some safety try to jump into that gorge or climb down in the gorge well I can't imagine Gagok disagreeing I was going to say do you agree (laughs) I'm just wondering Gagok is agrees obviously but but I'm I'm wondering uh, what might scare a herd of woolly rhinos but (laughs) maybe maybe a prairie fire (laughs) um but you get your two people, maybe hiding is better than scaring. Although scaring and isolating one or two, it's a, it's a hunting tactic you guys are familiar with. No, no, I mean, why are they running? Like, what, what, what are they They're just scaring? moving. They're just moving. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Now, you have the I feeling... Nastier behind them. Well, it could very well be. But uh, is it dinosaur? No. It's not that kind of, <laughs> not that kind of caveman game. It's Jesus riding a T-Rex. Well, one thing, and that, then that would really scare me. But... The, the one thing that uh, uh, you do know, though, because you do have some skill in the survivalism and so on and so forth, natural world, wherever these guys are, there's going to be some predators trailing around in there, you know, on the edges. Well, regardless, I think it's time to uh, get in the gorge, as they don't ever say. <laughs> Get in the gorge, George. Get in the gorge, George. Yeah, that's how people say that. That's a saying. Get in the gorge, George. Yeah, I think yeah, that was part of Paul Simon's song. <laughs> Just get in the gorge, George. <laughs> Don't give me no lips, Skip. <laughs> well, um, I was trying to think of something rhyme with doof, and I couldn't. So, uh, poof, that was Don't it. Don't look so aloof, doof. Yeah, I don't look so aloof, doof, as you jump down into the gorge. Now, it's not like you did this at the last minute. It takes a while for them to get there, and there's a thundering. It gets gets a little bit unnerving. And are you crouching down, I assume, on this side of the creek? I mean, on the the far side of the creek. Gagok would have suggested or insisted uh, even upon swimming or fording or whatever to the opposite side in case anybody falls down here. <laughs> yeah, it gets about waist deep is all it gets. You can ford it. Well, you guys uh, hit the thundering approach of this herd of great woolly rhinoceros. These things are big, all right? They're bigger than, than rhinoceroses are now. And as they come thundering up, it's almost like you can sense this shadow. And the, the ground around you literally, I mean, you can almost feel it shaking, the vibrations. And the first part of the herd comes up, and you see them for a split second. And then not just one, not just two, but a great many. Some of them stop, but most of them, in fact, just plow down into the creek. And every single one of them, I'm not going to sit here and make rolls for. But I am going to make a few rolls for the three or four closest ones to you. One of them bellows and screams and struggles and splashes and works his way across the creek towards you but ignores you and climbs right back up but he's only a few feet away you hesitate to move in the other direction because there's 
Another big one. He, though, he's lying in the ground, and uh, I'm going to roll some damage for him. It's kind of like, uh, okay, so he's lying in the ground screaming. That is way more than half his health damage to one limb, which essentially has crippled this big uh, rhino. That's a little rule from the advanced combat system I'm bringing in for him, just so I could cripple him. And he's laying on the ground screaming like only a woolly rhino can scream. And the other one like, screams, but it uh, bellows as it makes it across the stream. And uh, it's not close enough to you guys that's going to trample you. And then the last one that's even nearby, it makes a critical failure as it falls into the stream. So I couldn't say like its horn got stuck in some rocks along the creek and it's screaming and maybe it's... Uh, Go ahead and roll some damage for its little foreleg, too. And uh, that one's not broken, but he's in trouble. Meanwhile, the rest of the herd, there's been enough of a ripple movement above them that they have now veered off to the south, following the gorge instead of continuing on. Uh, but that first wave has fallen and crashed in, and you can hear up and down <laughs> the little creek. I mean, not just in this area, but for probably a mile in either direction, up and down the creek, you can hear screaming rhinoceroses and now you know some of them are on one side of the creek and the others aren't they know how to get it they can get across them if they're careful and they'll probably all rejoin but if anyone wants to dispatch and take some uh woolly Ooh. mammoth meat or parts and me want not mammoth, more. But big woolly rhino meat or parts you could easily go around dispatching them this is a great boon for you Mm -hmm. Me, me will uh, dispatch and me cut off horn. Yeah, I think we both uh, both looking looking for one of them horns. Yeah, it's a fine horn. The big horn is like seventeen inches long, and even a little bit serrated on the inner edge. It's quite a status symbol. It's a lot like the one Nolar has. You guys are gonna come back with like the same, you know. I'm going to wear it around my neck like Flavor of Flav's clock. Yeah, which it does yeah. seem like over large that way. But yeah, please do. Please do. And, uh, it, of course, now rendering, this is going to take a while, though. You do it, you know, to do it properly. And I also feel that some survival roles are necessary here. I'll let, I mean, do if you don't have that. But if you want to try to do yours by it yourself, then, uh, I think it'd probably be in character, and it would default to your IQ minus five to do it right without screwing it up. Trying to rule. Um, I do have. Oh, you do. Survival. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, it's a ten. So uh, we'll see. And uh, no. no. Yours has a big, terrible crack in it. I also well, have 10, but fortunately right. my skill is 16. I can hear dice rattling. What happened? Oh, did you roll? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Oh, yeah, I, roll, I rolled a 10. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you roll a 10, and you succeed. Yours is nice. Yours is going to be able to... It'll take some time to clean out all the inside and everything else, but at least it's, it's not cracked or disfigured in any way. And uh, the one you guys not necessarily worthless or unusable do. It's just slightly less prestigious. Would you, yeah, it's uh, lesser quality. Doof, would you like me to attempt to procure one for you without a crack? That's right. There are. There is a. You, you don't have to walk very far to find a dying woolly rhino. Hmm. This one, fine. Pretty. Very well. Okay, well, you guys put that together. And as I said, this this all takes some time. And uh, uh, it's at least midday by the time you uh, you move on. I assume you'll continue to walk on the, uh, the top of the creek. Are you going to walk on the same side that the herd was following the creek? Or are you going to walk on the opposite side where only a few managed to cross over? Oh, I don't know. Um, I think uh, I don't have an op opinion about that. 
Well, Doof, given that we know there is an entire herd on one side, we should probably stay on the other. Well, makes sense. It's the side you're already on, anyway, um, since you crossed over earlier. And I'll assume you climb back up then out onto uh, the tall grass, which in many places, you know, reaches over your heads. Um, but most of the time, it's uh, from between waist and uh, chest level. And as I say, you can gather up as much grain as you can. You guys can. You guys know how to cook grain, but it also tastes good just gnawing on it as you walk along. I re- Me think that Gagok should uh, should sit on Doof's shoulders to see above tall grass while walking. That's actually. Not a bad idea, Doof. I'm not sure how you came up with that, but that is, uh... Can you walk while... Are you strong enough to walk while I'm sitting upon your shoulders? Yes, me strong enough. We'll see how me coordinated enough. Well, uh, well, let's give it a shot. Yeah, and it's not a matter of doing it. It's just a matter of for how long and whether it fatigues him in the long run. But for a while, that'll be just fine. You climb up and you do get a better view. In fact, there's a hill up ahead. The, the country on this side of the creek is a little hillier. It was obscured earlier by kind of an arm of the woods that came out earlier that was marring it from your southern view. And uh, uh, the hill country up ahead, like I said, it's not nearly mountains, but... There's a few clustered hills. One of them looks bigger than the others, and there are some trees on these hills. Uh, in fact, at the foot of them, you can see two confused rhinos eating grass and wandering around. They normally don't, you know, attack you. You'd probably just walk past them, but there is a place of, uh, I wouldn't call it shelter, but not down deep in the grass, maybe about uh, a few more hours away to the south on foot. That's one thing you would definitely notice, and you can see little specks of, like I said, a few rhinos near them. Oh, I think we should probably keep our distance from them. I mean, I don't, I don't expect to be attacked or anything, but I don't want to risk potentially provoking them. There's no sense walking, thumbing your nose at them. Right. But after a few hours, you know, the afternoon, uh, the rays of the sun are lengthening. As you approach, and the cluster of hills is on your uh, your right as you're approaching, and you got to pass between them and the, and the creek. In fact, there's a little bit of a spring and waterfall, a bubbling sound that gets louder and louder as you approach the hills, and the trees are nice. And uh, the rhinos are still uh, pretty. You don't even see them now that you're closer. They're on other parts of the hill. Do you want to continue to? walk and possibly camp for the night somewhere near uh, uh, you know, somewhere out on the plain or do you want to stop here and sleep among these trees for the night? If it's getting late we might want to uh, stop here in the safety of the it's a trees. It's a gamble because you feel like you get another three or four hours walking and you just don't have any guarantees. And I merely point this out as an option. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are some scattered trees on the plains now to the south, so if you're just a tree or wood you wanted to find later, you wouldn't be totally out of luck if you skipped past the hill country. I think we should... Uh continue on until dark. Sounds like a concrete statement, and I'll assume you do. We gamble. And it may be for the best, because you know, if there's uh, anyone like you around anywhere, this is exactly the type of shelter they would look for, or a place to, to, to stay, would be that hill country. And if you just want to keep moving, as I say, uh, that being said, you've been walking for a few hours now with uh, with uh, Gagalk on your shoulders, Doof, so why don't you make a health roll? See if it's not fatiguing to you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting you a get little a tired fatigue. now. You take a point of fatigue, and you'll, you'll definitely want to sleep good tonight. 
It doesn't take much to recover from fatigue. But you might want to put him down now that you've got a lay of the land. So okay. you probably were moving a little bit slower too. You would have been encumbered, but we won't get into the details on that. But moving, you let's like say you've still got a few hours left to go, and you're still kind of following the, the creek, I assume, because it is going generally southwest, and you probably want to stay next to the fresh water. And even every now and then, you continue to see a dead rhino down in the creek. And wind is starting to get a little bit twilighty. Not quite deep purple yet, but just a, a light purple on one edge of the sky and a deep crimson on the other edge of the sky. Uh, both of you guys make sense rolls. This IQ rules. I should probably do this a secret for you, you know, so you don't know if there's anything you notice or not. I got right on mine. And I succeeded by two. And I only have a nine, but uh, I got it. Luckily, unsurprised, something suddenly does not seem right. You both look at each other. Just the hair on the back of your neck stands up, and you both turn around. And poking its head out of the grass, I mean, it's already sitting there with its head out of the grass, maybe 30 yards from you is a huge saber-toothed cat. It's teeth 11 inches long, and it's got a low growl in its throat, and it's looking right at you. Now, you don't know if you can take a saber-toothed cat. It's a powerful creature. Uh, you know that most of these trees are probably too small for it to climb, and they're not gifted climbers in any case. They're plains runners, but he's obviously been attracted here because of the dead rhinos and so on but is looking right at you and again that low growl on his throat do you want to dash for a tree or what do you want to try to do yeah if we know that they are not tree climbers although then we could be st stuck up there for hours Better than being eaten. I think uh, Doof will probably uh, maybe throw a rock and then run for a tree. Okay, sounds good. Do you want to go ahead and take that extra second to aim that rock? Okay. No. Go ahead and throw your rock at a minus four. What are you doing, Gagalk? Gagalk is frozen. That's very realistic. It, pretend to be a rock. Not only, well, yeah, but not only in fear, but um, he's wondering. I mean, I assume he's encountered these things before, and he knows that if he turns and runs, it's gonna. They'd be attracted to that, probably, right? So. Yes, and he probably hasn't encountered too many of them before, but he's, he's not alien to them. They're a rare creature, and you guys don't go off by yourself like this very often. Well, I hit with my um, stone, even with my uh, negative okay. four. Uh, I hit. Okay. So, well, it, I'm sorry oh, to tell you that it it uh, dodge. Well, you know, you can see a, you can picture a cat kind of sitting there, and all of a sudden, springs into motion, and uh, it moves to the side, and growls louder, and now it's pacing back and forth outside of the grass in front of you, looking at you, like it's making up its mind what to do. And it's right at the. And I'm sorry to interrupt. That is right at the edge of your like rock throwing range too. It's, uh, it's about thirty yards away. So, good shot. Yeah. So now I will run. All right. You turn and run, and you see that uh, Gagalk. You realize you're absolutely right. And the second he starts running, it just pounces and rushes after him. Now it's speed. Uh is an 8, and yours is a 6-something, I believe. 6.25. Uh, yeah, that being said, you are close enough to one of the trees that with a successful dexterity roll, you'll be able to pull yourself up into one before it comes lurching into the area. It's still going to take it 4 or 5 seconds to get here. Okay. Uh, yes. 
Well, that's great. Just great. You swing yourself up, and it's not a big tree. It's the closest one there was. The only good thing about it is it looks way too spindly to support the weight of the saber tooth if it tried to come up here and climb up after you. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, Gagog, what do you do as you see this? It's almost like the thing's like rushing past you. You know, it's not like it's it's not quite it's not really quite in between you and Doof, but it's getting there. Um, well, would it be close enough as it rushes past me that I could try to stab it with a spear? If you waited. But, but nope. you don't think you could kill it. But yeah, you could, you waited enough rounds for it to get close to you. It's not paying attention to you. It's going straight for the tree. Well, if it's going straight for the tree and not paying any attention to me right now, um, you know, if it's like zeroed in on its prey, it seems you know, like doof, then, yeah, then Gagog's just going to climb a different tree. Okay. All right. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to see if, if I'm, I'm going to give it a sense. No, it's not going to be distracted by that, which is good for you. So you guys are now just looking at each other from your little trees. And the saber me, tooth. Me pray. And, <laughs> well, pray to the Sky Father, the Earth Mother, the Great Owl Spirit, the spirits of the hunters who shine in the night sky. I think he was just stating a fact. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, that's funny. P-R-E-Y. I'm sorry. No, that's funny. It's a good pun. Pray must pray. Yes. Anyway, uh, after a while of wandering around, uh, the the saber tooth sniffs around, and you made enough subtle movement in the tree by now, Gagog, that it looks back at you. You can tell it knows you're there. It looks over at you and your tree. It looks over at Doof and his tree, and then it just sits down on the ground and begins licking itself, like it's just gonna wait. Mm. And it Can will... I? Uh, yes. Right. I did have an idea. Try to like freak it out a little. Maybe show it something it's never seen. Like I have this uh, flint sparker. Yeah. Do some, some, make some sparks and try to scare it that way. Or, or uh, worse comes to worse, I can just light the everything on fire. <laughs> Well, you do spark off some flints, and it uh, looks a little bit interested, but just the sparks going down don't seem to do anything. Now, uh, Gag Alec, what are you doing? It's starting to get dark now, too. Um, yeah, uh... I don't know, I think he's just gonna start eating, um, some of the, you know, rabbit for dinner. When you when you do that, yeah, the the saber tooth notices because it comes up and it's walking around looking really frustrated. It comes to the base of your tree, gag elk, and it stretches its whole body up, but it's still like three or four feet below you. You know, the highest it can get. It tries to pounce, but all it does is jiggle the tree. Make a dexterity roll to stay in. Take a plus four because I imagine you're fairly well braced. But really, just don't critically fail. Yeah, I rolled a six, so that's okay. going to be a quite a, quite a success. You know, it's very frustrated. He growls in a frustrated manner and walks over to Doof's tree and tries to do the same thing. Leaps up, pounds against the side of the tree. Doof, make a dex roll. Uh, but only take a plus two because you're trying to distract it and you still got your flint in your hand. Okay. Yes. Well, you managed to stay in. But just then, though, both of you are shocked. Uh, make will test. That's equal to your IQ again, unless you've got strong will or any other kind of advantage. To just not, to not fear, feel a thrill of fear in your heart. Who fails that? Anybody? I failed. Do if you freak out, uh, because suddenly from the from the area around you, hidden in the trees, there's this high, uh, ululating cry. You know. <laughs> just coming out everywhere, echoing all over. The saber tooth freaks out, stands up, just wa- turning its head in various directions, and suddenly there's this firebrand comes flinging out of the darkness, a, a torch that's on fire, and it lands next to the saber tooth. It growls and backs up and moves away, and then you hear another one, and there are these little figures that you can see coming out of the darkness, and the sa- they're all screaming at the saber tooth and throwing firebrands at it, and they drive it away. And the people look up at you in the trees, and in their torchlight, they look hideous. They're ugly. They have little tiny noses, 
big bulging foreheads that come out like an egg and these weird like, jutting chins and all of them are grimacing at you and showing all their teeth and making strange noises like <laughs> and many of them are pointing at you guys up in the trees your people don't laugh really you don't smile you know that's what they're doing but your characters don't realize that it's probably quite terrifying there's maybe about two dozen of them. <laughs> They're all pointing at you. They also, they don't even have skin like yours. It takes you, Doof might not realize this, but Gagoth realizes they've painted their bodies. It's almost like zebra stripes, but it's red and black, like a deep clay red and black. And their hair is all pleated in mud, like almost looks like dreadlocks. And they have these, uh, they have spears, but they're attached to these little bendy things. They're actually spear throwers, but you wouldn't recognize it as such. <laughs> they're all pointing up at you in the trees. And one of them, at the base of either tree, they're beckoning for you to come down. <laughs> they talk so much. They make a ton of noise. Remember, your guys' language is mostly gesture. When you've been role-playing, it's not really what you sound like. You grunt and gesture a lot. These guys are just like, blah, 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 all of them. And they're all gesturing for you to come down. They don't seem particularly threatening. These must be the flat faced people that you've heard about that have been moving up from the south, where they supposedly have a, a homeland around a hot lake, what you heard. And mm. uh, me no like flat faced people. Me close eyes tight. We don't want to see them. Uh, what about you, Gagalk? What are you doing? Do you want to climb down? Yes, Gagalk is going to climb down and cautiously approach the flat-faced people. I'm going to say that uh, when Doof, he, he shuts his eyes and then uh, he tries to... Um, put his hands over his ears but when he does that he falls out of the tree <laughs> <laughs> all right well in that case uh two you take one point of damage because you would have soaked two of them i just rolled three just far enough out that bam and ah, die, die, die. they all have a cluster of laughter but they help you up and gag out they might shock you for a little bit because you're being cautious but they kind of swarm you and they're all going, ha, ha, ha. We're touching your eyebrow ridges and your chin and your nose. And, ha, 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 ha. Touching you and exploring. You're really invasive, by the way. And uh, one of them lifts up your kilt and looks at your penis. And they go, oh, oh, ha, ha, hey, oh. And they're touching. You know how you've got that weird fringe of hair with a ball? They're patting the ball's head and touching your lips to see if you, you shave. And Gaga, they're all doing the same thing to you, although it's probably much more disturbing to you since you're still terrified of them. And of course, it's at night. You can only see them in torchlight. This probably is pretty scary. Well, do if they have discovered fire, so they clearly are more advanced than the hairy people. Yeah, and you can make an intelligence roll as you look at, at their weapons. I'm sorry, an IQ roll. Well, it is called intelligence. They just, uh, I believe, abbreviated IQ to be clever. And uh, I succeed. Because you've, you've said before, you guys maybe a cut above brain-wise. And you realize these things are carrying. You do kind of start to... I said earlier you didn't recognize it as a spear thrower. But you realize they can increase the leverage and speed and power of their spears with these things. Even their weapons are like better than yours. And but they're all touching you in there. They want you to come with them. They're almost pushing you. They're not really capturing you, but they're all, oh, mm, flat face people talk so much. Too much. Yes, but I am quite intrigued by this um, spear throw device, and I'm going to attempt, oh, oh, and going with them, of course, but I, I'm going to attempt to gesture at the, the uh, leverage device and See if I can figure out how it works, and if they'll let me like look at it. And... <laughs> One of them picks it up and does it, and he misses the tree that he was trying to hit, and they all laugh at him. But then they give it to you and decide to let you try it. And uh, this is going to default to a Dex minus four for you. Let's see if you can hit the tree that that guy missed. <laughs> Need a ten. And I rolled a 10. Hey, there you go. They all they all clap and uh, jump up and down. And again, they keep making these grimacing faces at you, showing all their teeth. Whenever they go, ah! And even when they look happy, they're making these big grimaces like they're growling and angry. 
And uh, one of them comes forward now. And he, uh, Habana Shad, he says, pointing in his chest. Habana Shad. Habana Shad. Habana Shad. Yes. And he points at Gagog. 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 And uh, I'm going to point to myself and say, chest. <laughs> chest. <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, I got chest. Uh, Habanashad say real people word. Huh? <laughs> uh, and Gagal just looks stunned by this. Uh, yeah, Habanashad break leg. Long winter stay real people. <laughs> Fix leg. Real people, grandfather, fixed leg. You stayed with us? <laughs> He's nodding. When was this? He tries to count on his fingers, and then he stops, and then he gets out a stick that's got notches on it, and he counts a couple more, and uh, he says something incomprehensible about a certain number of winters ago. It's been many years. Many years. That many, many winters ago. No, we find you. Plungar say, find real people. You, Mm -mm. you come, you come to Plungar. Yes, yes. (laughs) We will. (laughs) Me, Me no like these tongue waggers. Well, he turns around to the others and, and like tells them what's going on. It seems to take him forever. You guys can say it in like two gestures and a grunt. He's like, Buta Galaka Matichi to what about the fiends of what about many mini for the top of the photo about that semi table about I pick up about a bata bidi bidi bada. And they all go, and they all start clapping. And uh, they take you with them into the night to wherever they're camping. And I guess we'll find out all about that on our next uh, episode. Very well. well. Interesting encounter that. Uh, what's, what, what I'm finding amusing as we're playing this is that, you know, Gagok talks like this and the way it sounds, you know, <laughs> and compared to these guys, they're like so much more advanced, but they're just like, <laughs> yeah, I figure they, to you, they would sound like they never shut up. You know, they make right. so many sounds with their mouths that uh, like birds. Because you guys probably have a very direct, simple language. Well, what I'm getting is like the way they're smiling and talking a lot. It's like one of those really annoying coworkers that we've all probably <laughs> had. They just won't shut the fuck up. It's like six in the morning and you're chipper. Well, they, they're, they're <laughs> definitely chipper, and they they sure knew how to drive away the saber too. They saved your lives. So, and according to Habanashad, they were looking for you. Or they were trying to find real people for some reason. Some Plungar, maybe that's their name for a shaman or something, sent them. But we'll find out. Yes, we will. We'll find out next time on Goonies World. Mm-hmm.